check on. one, two. We still on? Yeah, we're check on. One, two, it's, check just, one, two. it's so loud, you can't even tell our mics are on. Just want to sing some Dean Martin before we be not. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Good to be with you. Happy Easter. Friendly reminder this evening at 6.30, youth activities continue. Please come on out tonight. We're going to have a great time. Also, Wednesday, Bible study resumes. We've got two sessions each Wednesday, one at 10.30 in the morning and one at 7 in the evening. Pastor Ellen, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. Uh, a lot of great faith formation <laughs> events going on uh, in the life of the church as well. We have a baptism that was last night. Congratulations to little Daniel, the new, newest child of God. And today, another big day. Uh, we welcome to the table two first communicants, Kai and Michaela. Uh, we're so proud of you, and congratulations on the big day. Yeah, good stuff. Any other announcements from the congregation before we begin anything at all? All right, if not, let's take a moment now to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship with the prelude.
Please stand. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Congregation may kneel as able. Gracious God, have mercy on us. Confess. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for our gathering song. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading today is taken from the book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 133 and will be read responsibly in full verse. How good and how pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the dew of Hermon flowing down the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Today's second reading is from the first book of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life, this life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus. His son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and, our, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, and the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Mary. And please stand for our gospel acclamation. According to St. John, the 20th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in His name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let's have our little ones come forward, see what we can get into today. Come on down. Come on down. We're going to have some fun today. Good morning, good morning. Nice to see you, Declan. And his side is Carter, Elizabeth. Come on up, boys. Nice to see you. Good morning, Michaela. You look so nice. Anthony, how's it going? Audrey, good morning. Preston, nice to see you. Come on up, gang. Come on up. Make yourselves at home. Have a seat. There we go, Elizabeth. Come on, Riley Kay. Good, good, good. All right, gang. I brought something fun today i'm very excited to share to share with you see with you know what this is right here take this golf ball yes indeed hey we are going to play golf silas we're going to play golf all summer yeah easter's over time to go out and have some fun right football's good too we're going to wait for the fall right Carter, are you ready for some golf? Yeah, good. Anybody else going to golf with us this summer? Oh, all right. If you can, all right, ask your parents. All right, now here we go. I want to show you this golf ball. This golf ball, Pastor Ellen, is really kind of neat. You know, some balls are like all smooth on the outside, but the golf ball, if you look at Preston, I'm just going to hand that to you. If you look at that, you can pass that down. I'll get another one out there. If you look at that, you can see on the golf ball, all these little marks. You see it? All those. Anybody here have dimples? Everybody smile. Let me see if you have dimples. Nice. Yeah, a couple of dimples. Dimple. We call them dimples on the golf ball. Now, you are all very, very bright young people. Let me ask you do you know why there are all these marks on the golf ball? Because they've been hit by a golf ball. Well, that's a good theory. That actually is yeah. a very good theory, that yeah. if you hit the, the ball with the golf club, that it gets some marks. A lot of times, <laughs> Pastor Dan hits his ball like into a tree or something. <laughs> if the tree doesn't fall down, but then it gets some marks on it. Now, these, those little dimples, those little marks on there, those are there to help the ball fly straight. Yeah, so it goes where it needs to go, and we hope. It doesn't always work out, but we hope 
that the ball goes where we want it to go. Now listen, the reason I bring this up is because we had yet another baptism this weekend, just last night here at Bethlehem, and we got a bunch more coming in the weeks ahead. New young people joined into our family of faith, and at each and every baptism, we too get a mark, gang. Everybody kind of look. Just right here, we too get a mark right on our foreheads, and it's the mark of the cross. And that mark, that promise of the Holy Spirit, that helps us, not only the golf ball, to keep on the right path, to head in the right direction, and make sure that cross, that promise of the Spirit, with that mark, we can be sure that we will end up right where we need to be. And listen, i got to tell you, we are grateful that you are with us this morning. Now, I want you to have a great day and a very happy Easter celebration. How about we hear it for our young people today. Mark with the cross of Christ forever. Every single one of them headed in the right direction. And a gift to us. Thank you, Declan. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Good job. All right, a lot of good energy this morning, as we like to see. I'm just going to show my hand right away as I begin this sermon and let you know that I'm a big fan of Thomas. You know, you read John 20, verses 19 to 31, and sadly, after reading that, yes, people have made determinations in the past, and now we don't call Thomas anymore, just Thomas. What do we call Thomas? Doubting Thomas. That's terrible. Not right, Bart? That's not very nice, right? And I want to submit to you today that I really do think that Thomas shouldn't be called Doubting Thomas. And not only that, I think Thomas is a great hero of the faith. And I'm serious. I think there's a lot to be learned from Thomas, and I think that he offers us a model of the godly life. And I say this for several reasons. First of all, I say this because Thomas remembered Thomas always remembered who he was and where he had come from. Thomas, from the very beginning, was a disciple. If you read the Gospel narrative, you understand clearly that he had some high moments as he shared his life with Christ, learned along the way, witnessed the miracles, and did some amazing things. We also know, not only did Thomas clutch to that identity as a disciple, he always stuck with the rest of the gang. We know this because in the gospel text that's appointed for today, when Thomas needed to be with those other disciples, he immediately was able to find them. Be rejoined to them and continue that journey of faith together. Thomas remembered, gang, who he was and where he had come from. Here's the other thing about Thomas that I want to suggest might be of value to us. Thomas was curious. And I want to encourage you to stay curious. And I'm not talking about some kind of like bumper sticker thing. No, 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 no. This is a kind of holy curiosity. You know, I got to tell you, we have no idea where he was. But all of the other disciples were gathered together in the upper room. There was one who was not there. Who was it? Thomas. Oh, you got to love the Luke. Thomas. It was Thomas. Exactly right. It was Thomas. And he wasn't there. All the other disciples are locked away in the upper room because they are what? Afraid. Thomas is out and about doing his thing. God bless him. He wanted to see God at work in the world beyond the confines of that little space. Thomas was curious. Has anybody here ever heard of FOMO? Yeah? Fear of missing out? That's the other thing that Thomas lifts up. He's got a kind of righteous FOMO going on in his life. And it's good. I know fear of missing out can go too far, but in this case, God bless him. He was a little unsettled and he didn't stick around. He got out into the world to see God at work in the world. And when you are out in the world, and when you are witnessing God at work in the world, inevitably, questions arise. Questions arise. We begin to ask, why? How? When? Where? And, you know, I have to tell you, as a pastor... So often, in my journey through ministry, decades of ministry, so often people have come to my office and they said, Pastor, you know, I was wondering about this, that, or the other thing. I'm wondering why this has happened. 
I'm wondering why I'm going through this particular phase or season of my life. But I didn't want to ask because I didn't want that question to be a demonstration of my lack of faith. Yes? I got news for you. Good news. Questions are good. Thomas teaches us to ask the big questions, to make the big requests. These are not a sign of your lack of faith. To the contrary, they are a demonstration of your great faith. Because if you ask a question prayerfully and humbly and expect a response, it's a demonstration of your trust in the divine that will encounter you in your life. And think, friends, think about this question that Thomas asked. He says, I will not believe. I will not believe unless I can see the marks of the nails in his hands, right? And he goes on to say, I will not believe unless I can put my hand, my fingers, in his side. Did everybody hear that in the gospel? Or is it just me? i got to tell you something. That's a pretty brazen request. Yes? That's a pretty bold ask. And note, friends, after that ask, after that request, no bolt of lightning comes down out of the heavens to strike Thomas. Is that what happens? Absolutely not. Instead, our Lord Christ comes to him. Now, I do think it's awesome that Jesus made him wait a full week. You know? A full week just to get him squirming a little bit, get him a little bit worried. But you can imagine, he had been there all along. He wanted that experience as well. He needed to see the risen Christ, and sure enough, the risen Lord came. And when Christ came, there was not a single moment where our Lord scolded Thomas. There was not a single word of correction or reprimand. Instead, Thomas received the very same greeting as every other disciple. If you're reading the text closely, you know. Jesus appears and simply says to Thomas, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And then next, an astounding moment. Go ahead. Do what you need to do to believe. Know who you are and where you come from. Be curious. Ask the big questions. And when you do those things, I would also encourage you to be willing to be transformed. Be willing to be transformed when God encounters you in your everyday life. Thomas was transformed. He had a beautiful confession of faith. He says, my Lord, and then he adds to that. Do you remember what he said? My God. Fully understanding the divinity of Christ there in his presence. And that's what our Lord is all about. Being incarnate, friends, in our midst, a true presence in our lives. And it's far too easy for us to become spiritually stubborn. I'm learning this now as I'm getting older. I know most of you are very, very young and impressionable. But some of us, when we get older, there is a temptation to just get a little bit stuck in our ways. Is anybody else going through this? No, absolutely not. <laughs> Yo, no, no, no. But listen. This life of discipleship that we share together, it's about growth. It's about growing in wisdom and receiving the gifts as they come and allowing all of those moments of epiphany and revelation to shape anew who we are. The fact is, friends, we have a living God that we encounter in the living Word and it's all meant to impact our lived experience. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now, amen and lived experience. So what I want to do is take all that theoretical stuff, all that theoretical stuff, and I want to make it practical in the hope that this lesson can come to life a little bit. Because I got to tell you, friends, I was there. I was there from the very beginning. I was there when it was tough to stick with the team. I was there when they drafted him as the 11th overall pick in the Major League Baseball draft, 2011. I was there when they called him up from the minors, yes? And he began to play. I was there, friends, when McCutcheon's leadership was at its pinnacle in 13, 14, and 15. Does anybody remember that? And so I 
had the great fortune of being there last Friday because you see it was opening day and McCutcheon has 299 home runs and I was just sure Marty I was sure he was holding back and then when he got back to PNC Park he would hit that 300th and so I was there in the snow <laughs> in my long john I was teased. Somebody told me I was wearing a snowsuit, which was not true. <laughs> Light a cap on your right one. Just a little bundled up. I wanted to witness. You know what I mean? And sure enough, the guy did not even get a hit. Did not even get a hit. Came close. Did not even get a hit. Now, I may or may not be there when this happens but I will be able to enjoy the moment with all the other faithful, true Pittsburghers when it happens, because it'll be on TV and I can watch the highlight over and over and over again. Yes, and affirm, right? This is actually transpired. And we'll celebrate together, and that's wonderful. Am I right? But that's baseball, just baseball. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but it is. It's just baseball. It's not faith. So stick with me, because you've got to understand, friends, when that happens, and I trust that it will happen when Gutchen hits his 300th, I'll celebrate. I'll be joy-filled. But the fact of the matter is that's all I can do. All I will ever be able to do is celebrate his accomplishment. But I will never, friends, I will never ever know what it feels like to hit 300 home runs in Major League Baseball. Will I? It's just baseball. But we're people of faith. People of faith. And there's a difference now. Because our champion comes to us. And he says, I will be raised. I will live forever in the kingdom of heaven. I will find my way through the valley of tears to days of light and glory. The beauty of our faith is this. That champion, that savior of ours doesn't just ask us to share in his moment. Doesn't just ask us to celebrate his accomplishment. This is a lived faith, friends. This is a shared faith, friends. So our Lord and Savior says to us, my resurrection, my new life, don't just celebrate that. Don't just witness that. That you and you and you that is yours. You too, by the grace of God, will celebrate that same glorious moment that I knew coming out of the tomb. This, friends, is the great common, shared experience of new life that is ours through the promise of Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand, friends, and join together in our hymn of the day.
together and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church the world, and all those in need of good news. Your church cries out, O oh God, and you listen. As you drew, drew near to the disciples, draw near to us this day. Breathe on us your Holy Spirit, that our faith is renewed, and we witness to your love, God of grace. Hear our your creation cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Nurture trees, crops, wildflowers, and all growing things. Guide farmers, gardeners, arborists, and others who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world cries out, O oh God, and you listen. Guide police, firefighters, paramedics, and other first responders to work for the well-being of communities and the dignity of every person that no one may live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Hear your people crying out for justice, for the end of racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe. We pray for all who cry out in suffering or pain, especially those we name within our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your congregations cry out, O oh God, and you listen. Renew pastors, deacons, musicians, and other staff, administrators, and volunteers who facilitated the Holy Week and Easter worship. Open our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you heartfelt thanks and praise for the many, many ways that you nurture and encourage each and every one of us. Today we lift before you Kai and Michaela. As they come to your table, we pray, dear God, that you would fill them with the power of your Holy Spirit. Just as you bless those first disciples, we trust, dear God, that you will bless them. We lift before you Daniel, the newly baptized, Shine your light on his path, dear God, and lead him in your joy each and every day. And for all those who are gathered in this place this morning, give us a sense, dear God, that you continue to be truly present in our midst. God of grace, hear our prayer. Accept our gratitude, O oh God, for the lives of, the of those who now rest in you, especially Dietrich Bonhoeffer and all whose lives have been given in the faithfulness to the gospel. Grant us your peace amid our fears. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
that share with one another a sign of God's grace and peace.
Please stand. Let us pray. Risen, Risen one, one, you call Let us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O holy God, you are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us in this meal, that are fresh with this heavenly food. We may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. All is ready and all are welcome. Please be seated.
this time we invite Kai and Michaela and their families forward for First Communion.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And if you have a bulletin, if you'd turn with me to the communion section where we had our welcome for First Communion, let's join in that in celebration of Kai and Michaela's First Communion. Let us welcome Kai and Michaela in Christ to Holy Communion. Welcome to the Lord's table. We thank God for you. We pray that you will find joy and strength in this meal until we feast forever at God's heavenly banquet. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share in the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Our sending song is 376, Thine is the Glory. Rejoice and be glad.